hi guys so this is my off-grid uh, solar setup uh, this is a project I've been working on um, since like November um, when I moved to Lagos uh, it's an upgrade of an existing system um, when I was in Abuja I had uh, a system that I was running for close to four years and so relocating back to Lagos gave me an opportunity to upgrade the, the systems and uh, yeah so this is the whole setup I for batteries I have a, uh, I have four 12 volts 200 ampere uh, flooded acid batteries and um, these are like excite um, tubular uh, batteries and um, so far so good they're performing quite well I, I ran a capacity test on them yesterday and they pretty much you know did quite well like i was able to pull uh 165 amps uh while discharging them at c10 and um and the the voltage was um 23.3 Uh, 23.3 volts uh, when I stopped the um, the the capacity test. So I what I did was to so these are series but this these batteries are connected series parallel. So you have 24 volt, 24 volts. Uh, then I parallel the output. And so what I did for the capacity test was to decouple them, uh, parallel them, and I ran a capacity test on one bank and I ran the capacity test on the other bank. So. And, and they, they held their own. So I just finished carrying out some maintenance, charger, equalization, and, and, and whatnot. Uh, this is the inverter. I use a, uh, it's called iPower Plus, but it's actually an expert uh, MKS uh, 3KVA inverter. And I've been using this inverter since, uh, for close to a year now, and it's, an, it's, a, it's a really, really uh, good inverter. One thing I love about this inverter is that it has a very very uh it's a very efficient uh, inverter which means that it's when it's not running any load it's using about 25 watts which for me is just it's just amazing um for the charge controllers i have the victron uh mppt uh 100 uh, 150 volts um, smart controller um I just got this unit uh, i was using some other unit before but i replaced it with the uh this is an upgrade uh connected to this is uh i have nine jingli uh 335 watt panel unfortunately those panels are facing the north side uh, because that's the only place in the roof that i have to do the uh for the installation so um i have some accessories so for example the way i connected my batteries was to have I have two bus bars here and you have the positive bus bar and you have the negative bus bar and the system is configured in such a way where every uh, uh, positive connection so these batteries here the parallel batteries so all the positive from the batteries connect to the uh, positive bus bar and all the negatives from the battery connect to the negative bus bar I use 25 mm um, cable of equal length for this configuration uh, the whole setup is it's, uh, it's not, could it be neater but you know it's a diy system so you know uh i have a, a circuit breaker uh, this one is between the the uh, charge controller and the inverter and the batteries and then you have the inverter and the battery these are uh, 125 arms um circuit breakers um, i also have ac breakers here for the AC uh, both coming into and going out input and output uh, for the solar panel I have uh, circuit breakers too so I have them in three strings and I parallel the output setup I have this this these boxes are kind of like a quasi DIY combiner boxes so all the strings get paralleled here the negative get paralleled here and the positive get paralleled here but the run through the circuit breaker so I can isolate each strings maybe for troubleshooting and whatnot um i also have some other accessories like uh there is a, a victron battery monitor so basically what this guy does is to monitor the voltage and the terminal points um 
to ma to monitor the temperature so it's connected to battery monitors the temperature of the bat of the batteries and also monitors the voltage so it senses the the voltage of the battery from the terminal point uh, the, the reason why this is very useful is that oftentimes there is usually due to resistance um, you find out that the voltage of the battery at terminal is always different from the voltage of the battery um, when uh, the voltage that the controller sees so by having this um, this battery sensor here uh, Vic Victron calls it the I think battery sensor smart battery sensor or something like that and it connects to the battery terminal and it's able to get the real accurate voltage of the battery and then sends it to the um, smart charge controller over Bluetooth. So I have to set up, you set up a Bluetooth network. So the, the controller sees the temperature of the battery and also sees the, um, the voltage of the battery and uses that for, uh, to adjust um, uh, when it's, you know, during charging. So it does the com uh, temperature compensation thing so that it uses the temperature of the battery to know how to, you know, limit the amount of voltage that's going into the battery based on the temperature. Um, lastly, I have um, some other monitoring devices. So I have a shunt here. And this shunt, um, basically, you have both the inverter and the charge controller, the negative feeds from the inverter and the charge controller connected to the shunt. And basically what the shunt does is to let me know how much um, goes into the battery and comes out of the battery. So basically helps me to monitor it. So I have a big Victron um, battery monitor, which basically uh, checks the system. So right now my system is in float and there's been pretty much nothing going in or out of the battery and the battery is 100% full. So uh, with this Victron battery monitor, you pretty much, there's a setting where you configure your battery, you tell it how much capacity you have, the voltage of the battery, and then you put settings like um, the, the voltage of the battery when it's full and, you know, put some parameters there. And, and it's quite smart. It basically knows that you put in the efficiency of your battery. So this is a flooded battery. I set the efficiency to like 87%. Uh, if you're using something like AGM, you can set it for like 90%. And if you're using something like uh, lit lithium, you can set it to like maybe 98% or something. And so it uses that to to know to, to kind of put into uh, factoring losses when it's calculating how much is going into the battery and how much is coming out of the battery. And that's really nice because it gives me an idea of the battery state so i can just look at it to see if my battery discharge and uh, what state of um, discharge the battery is at lastly i have a uh, a monitoring device so this is a raspberry pi and basically what this raspberry pi does is to query all the components that i have set up here it queries the inverter the charge controller and the battery monitor and there is this usb uh um, device you uh, use usb cables that connects to the charge controller and connects to the um connect to the battery monitor and it queries them for information and uses that information to know the true state of the system. So for example, for the inverter, it knows how much load uh, the inverter outputs. Uh, let me know when the grid is on, how much I'm, I'm, I'm using from the grid and the percentage of the load and all that. And I can graph it so I can send it to uh, my, my server in the cloud and plot a graph and this information is the, the information are there. They are logged, and the same thing for the charge controller. So I can know things like how much yield I had today, my peak, um, my peak power, and all the uh, all those other information. And for for the for the for the battery monitor, for example, I get things like the depth of discharge, uh, the percentage of charge, and so all this information gets sent over the internet to the cloud, where I can get to remotely monitor um, the system. So yeah, in a nutshell. This is my small uh, DIY project. Uh, this project was commissioned in December and um, it's pretty, uh, it was fun making and it was quite challenging. So for example, I had to power the, the Raspberry Pi directly from the battery. I didn't use the power supply because I wanted it to run outside of the inverter. Right now the inverter is off because I ran some equalization and the inverter could not support the voltage of the battery at such high, um, for such high voltage, the inverter can't support it, so I had to turn it off. But this guy will still be monitoring because I got a power supply from China 
and basically this power supply connects to my battery bank and it's able to power the raspberry pi through this usb out so it supplies um, 5 volts 5.2 volts at 300 at uh, 3 amps so it uses that to to charge the um uh, the the raspberry pi and basically raspberry pi just runs and queries these devices and then send me the data and stuff so yeah this is my off-grid um solar setup uh if you have any suggestion or uh, things i can do to improve the setup uh let me know all right thanks for watching